Hello everyone. Welcome to my talk. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, foreign function and memory API in Java and the state of uh, FFI in general. So, my name is uh, Deepu Keshashidran. I'm the co-lead of uh, JHipster. I also created a nifty dashboard called uh, K dash for Kubernetes. Uh, I also created the JDL studio for JHipster and I work on a bunch of other open source projects. Uh, I'm an open source aficionado and a polyglot developer. Uh, I work as a developer advocate at Okta with a focus on DevOps. I also publish frequently about uh, languages and tech on my blog. Uh, you can find it on uh, deepu.tech. Uh, please do follow me on Twitter if you are interested in my content. Uh, I have written a book about JHipster. If you like this talk, uh, you might like the book as well. So, um, let's see. What is a foreign function interface? Uh, a foreign function interface is the uh, ability to call functions or routines return in one programming language from another. So, this is generally used to access uh, native functions or programs uh, on the host uh, OS. Uh, most languages provide this feature out of the box in some forms. It is also known, uh, you know, known by uh, different names in different languages. Uh, uh, most languages use the C, C++ calling conventions for FFI and uh, natively support uh, calling C, C++ functions, especially uh, uh, C functions, uh, which means uh, any language that can uh, that has uh, C interop can also kind of work because you can generate. Uh, uh, C headers from those uh, uh, programs, and you can uh, then, then then call them. So so basically, you you call routines from uh, another program regardless of the language. Uh, so most modern languages provide this uh, feature in intuitive ways, like for example GoLang, Rust. Uh, they all provide uh, very intuitive ways to work with foreign functions. Uh, the term originated from Common Lisp. Uh, the term uh, FFI uh, originated from Common Lisp. So uh, uh, in, in Java, we don't call it FFI uh, and similarly, I think uh, in, in some other languages, there are uh, some different terminologies, but the most commonly known uh, terminology is FFI. And most languages, uh, they default to C, C++ calling conventions, as I mentioned. Uh, so, um, back in the days, uh, like, like previously, right? Or, or maybe like you know five ten years ago, uh, most of the use cases for FFI were around uh, interacting with uh, legacy applications and accessing host OS features or native libraries stuff like that. But these days, FFI is becoming more and more uh, necessary, um, especially uh, especially with the advent of uh, uh, machine learning, uh, deep learning. I know uh, GPU uh, processing and stuff like that. So these days we use uh, FFI to interact with legacy applications, of course, to access features not available in uh, the, the the language that you are working on, um, to use native libraries, uh, to access functions or programs on the host OS, um, and and newer uh, approaches like uh, GPU and CPU offloading. Like for example, if you want to work with uh, you know. Uh, uh, programs like uh, CUDA, OpenCL, OpenGL, uh, Vulkan, DirectX. Uh, uh, so the, the 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 CUDA and OpenCL are uh, CPU uh, uh, offloading uh, um, applications, whereas OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX are GPU uh, programs that you might want to uh, have direct access to. Uh, then there is also multi-precision arithmetic, matrix multiplications. These kind of things are much more efficient uh, when done in a native language. And they are they are much more performant when when accessed uh, you know in a in a native language. Then there is uh, deep learning with uh, TensorFlow, uh, CUDNN, BLAS, etc. Um, there are also use cases like uh, using a, a specific uh, native uh, you know uh, uh, program or library written in a native language like OpenSSL, uh, V8 uh, you know the V8 engine from Node.js or or Chrome, uh, uh, SQLite or uh, you know uh, integrating a Python interpreter in your uh, application, etc. So there are many more use cases for FFI these days. Um, so first, uh, let us uh, look at the brief history of uh, foreign functions in, in Java. Uh, the standard for FFI in Java for a long time is JNI. Uh, 
which is uh, java native interfaces mm. and and honestly it's notorious for being problematic uh if you are used to other languages like rust go or python you will probably know how easy and intuitive it is to use uh ffi in them and that leaves uh, you know something to be desired in the java world uh, because of uh, how uh, convoluted and how complex it is to use jni uh even to do a small native call using jni you'd have to do a considerable amount of work and it could still go wrong and end up being a security issue for the app uh the main issues with jni is its complexity to use and uh, the need to write uh, c bridge code manually this could lead to unsafe code and pose uh, security risk it can also cause performance overhead in some situations because you would have to write uh, native code and uh, we all know uh, the the performance and safety of native code is as good as uh, you know uh, the programmer who is writing it because there is no inherent uh, fail safes again um, you know uh, writing memory on safe code and performance of course means you have to write performance code in the first place uh the performance and memory safety of jni code depends on the developer as i mentioned and hence the mileage may vary uh in my opinion it is high time for the java world you know to move away from jni uh, but unfortunately it is still the most performant way to do uh, ffi in java uh if implemented properly uh, not not counting whatever we are going to see later on uh, but for the time being in the standard uh, java library stable standard release even as of uh, jdk 17 or even 18 uh, jna is the most performant way to do uh, native uh, uh, calls so uh, the complexity of uh, jni uh, gave rise to some community driven libraries that made it at least simpler to do ffi in java at, uh, at least it, it reduced the complexity and made it easily accessible uh, jna is one of them so it is built on top of jna um, uh, but at least it makes uh you know uh, foreign functions easier to use especially it removes the need to write any c bridging code manually and hence reduces the chance of uh, some memory safety issues memory safety issues it still has the same disadvantages of jni and it is slightly slower than jni in many cases uh it is also widely used and battle tested so definitely a better option than using jni directly so unless like unless your use case demands extreme uh like like performance tuning like the the, the most uh, you know if you want to get the most performance out of your implementation then probably consider doing jni directly otherwise there are alternatives uh, you know which uses jni underneath but are much more simpler and much more maintainable um so um another popular option is uh, java native runtime or jnr and though it's not as widely used or mature as jna it's much more modern and has a much more modern uh, api uh, it has better performance than jna uh, and there are also uh, uh, i mean it, it it it's much more performant than jna so uh, after jna jnr is uh, 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 you know it's not as performant as uh, uh, jna but it's the closest uh, uh, you know it's it's a close second i would say and it also has the same advantages like uh, uh, you don't have to write any uh, you know uh, c bridging code because it does a dynamic binding it has a modern api uh, performance as i mentioned very easy to use mm, uh, similar interface access for c c++ assembly etc uh, but also has the the disadvantages of jna which is because it's built on top of jna and it's it, it's also dif difficult to debug like other options so um so that that's like what we have in 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 you know currently that that's like stable stuff we have currently so um when it comes to what what's next right what what's the evolution what's what's next uh, for foreign functions in java uh, that is project panama so project panama is the latest java project aiming to simplify and improve ffi and it's uh, and as part of uh, part of this there are many proposals that's currently being incubated so let's take a look at some of the active proposals and how it will uh, work uh, uh, and and let's see if we finally get proper uh, native ffi in in java uh, the first piece of the puzzle is the uh, foreign memory access api so um the foreign memory uh, memory access api uh, has a few goals so the the main thing is uh, safely and efficiently 
um, acts as foreign memory outside of the Java heap. So a foreign memory in the sense native memory or off heap memory. So that's the primary goal of foreign memory access. It has, uh, uh, you know, certain, uh, 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 all these APIs have certain standard goals. So consistent API for different types of memory, that is one. Um, uh, so JVM memory safety should not be compromised. So that is one uh, uh, problem with uh, JNI is the uh, uh, memory safety issues because uh, JNI kind of exposes the entire JVM uh, to the uh, native library. And uh, if you end up uh, uh, writing unsafe mem memory unsafe code in the native uh, C binding, you could compromise your entire uh, JVM. So JVM memory safety should not be compromised. Uh, explicit memory deallocation, so that is one goal. And um, uh, this, this particular API is designed to interact with different kinds of memory resources, including off heap or, or native memory. So this was first incubated in uh, JDK 14 as uh, JEP 370. Uh, then it had a second incubator in JDK 15 and third incubator in JDK 16. So currently this uh, is this is combined as foreign function and memory API. We'll, we'll see that a uh, uh, bit later. Um, the second part uh, of the puzzle, uh, which actually makes uh, foreign function calls possible, is the foreign linker API. So foreign linker API um, uh, provides APIs for statically typed pure Java access to native code. So it has uh, it has uh, you know uh, goals similar to uh, the previous one. It was also its own goals. So focus on ease of use, flexibility, and performance. Um, it it has uh, initial support for C interop. That means any any language that can uh, do C interop can also work. Uh, so uh, call native code in a DLL, SO, or dialib. So that's how uh, a native uh, calls will be made. Uh, it can create native function pointer to Java method, which can be passed to code in a native library. So it can it can do you know two way uh, communication with a native uh, library. So this was first incubated in JDK 16, and uh, then this was combined with the uh, previous uh, uh, foreign uh, memory access API to become um, foreign memory and uh, it was combined to become foreign function and memory API. So we'll, we'll see that. Uh, there is another uh, lesser known or no, um, lesser known part of the, the, the uh, Panama project, which is the uh, vector API. So vector API is uh, not that, not spoken, uh, no, it's not uh, talked about much, but it's also quite important because it's an API for reliable and performant uh, vector computations. So it is plat platform agnostic, it has uh, clear and concise API, reliable runtime compilation performance and uh, graceful degradation. So these are the goals for this particular project. So this was also first incubated in JDK 16, uh, second incubator in JDK uh, 17. Uh, I think I have a typo there, so that, that, that should be JDK 17. And third incubator in JDK 18. And uh, uh, current, like currently what we have is a, a evolution of the foreign linker API and foreign uh, memory access API. Uh, they evolved together to become the foreign function and memory API. Uh, so it has the same goals and features as the uh, original two, uh, which is ease of use, safety, performance, and general generality. And, and combining them means they will have uh, concise APIs, um, uh, shared goals, and everything. So this was first incubated in JDK 17, which is the latest LTS release. Uh, and the second incubator is planned in JDK 18. And, and hopefully uh, after the third incubator, we'll start getting previews for this. And uh, you know, after probably within the next two years or something, we, we could have uh, a, a stable release with uh, uh, Project Panama uh, featured there. And finally, we could get rid of uh, JNI. And uh, last but not the least, there is also an awesome tool called JExtract as part of Project Panama. So JExtract is a simple command line tool. It can generate a Java API from one or more native uh, C headers. It's uh, shipped with the OpenJDK Panama builds currently. So I would assume that uh, once Project Panama becomes part of uh, you know, uh, JDK and becomes a stable uh, feature, this would also be shipped with, uh, with the JDK. Uh, this makes, uh, you know, JExtract makes working with large C headers a cakewalk. 
um, we'll, we'll uh, look into a bit more detail about that. So uh, first, uh, let's see how foreign function and memory API differs from JNA, because that, that differentiation is important for us to uh, appreciate this. So uh, let's take a very simple example of calling a calling the get bit um, uh, function from the standard uh, C uh, header, like uh, the uni uh, std uh, C header. Um, as you can see here, there are exactly six steps to make this simple native call using JNA. You start by writing a Java class which declares the native method. Then you use Java C to generate a header. Uh, generate a header file and a C class for this Java class that you have written. So uh, the, the header file at least is auto-generated and you get a stub for the uh, uh, C class. Uh, next, uh, you will implement the uh, C class uh, because this is the uh, C binding button. You have to actually manually implement what you want to do. So if you want to uh, return get bit there, then you have to actually go in and write, uh, you know, uh, uh, that that code you have to go in and write return get paid with, uh, with the proper includes and everything so you have to actually do that so um, also remember like uh, uh, these are Java developers writing C code so if you are a Java developer the possibility of you being uh, 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 an expert in C or even you being familiar with C is kind of like like 50 50 maybe or yeah, it depends. It depends on mm, different individuals, right? Uh, but if you are using JNA, then you are expected to write C code for whatever functionality that you are going to do. Um, which means you um, you also have access to the entire JVM via the JNA N variable. If you look at the uh, generated C class here, you can see that there is uh, JNA N uh, a pointer for the entire uh, JVM you uh, know environment being passed to your uh, uh, native code so you can basically do whatever you uh, you want here you can probably go in and corrupt uh, uh, JVM memory you can compromise the JVM security lots of possibilities <laughs> fun right so um, so imagine being a, a Java developer without much experience in uh, writing C code and being handed this uh, this this entire uh, uh, memory pointer and and you know uh, you doing something uh, because even the most experienced C developers still cause uh, 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 enough, uh, uh, you know, CVEs because of uh, the the nature of C. C is an uh, inherently unsafe language; it's not a memory safe language. So there is no memory safety. So you are responsible for uh, 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 ensuring memory safety, which is the worst thing I would say. Because depending on humans to uh, ensure memory safety of uh, uh, a computer program is the worst thing you could do. Uh, because uh, the, you know uh, that is uh, kind of like all the CVEs we have like every uh, other day because of a memory safety issue uh, talks to that. So uh, uh, I don't think you could have a counterpoint that you know uh, trusting people to write memory safe code is a good idea because seventy percentage of all security vulnerabilities uh, in our industry is because of memory safety issues, which is caused by. Uh, people writing unsafe code in a language like C, C++. So, you know, imagine having that kind of uh, responsibility, I mean, giving that kind of responsibility to a Java developer and, and imagine the, the, the pressure. So, um, yeah, so fun and probably security nightmare. So next, uh, so once, you know, once you uh, navigate the, uh, the native uh, or, or C uh, code part, um, you would have to compile the C code into platform specific dynamic library. So that's another step of fun, figuring out uh, what format is required, compiling it, getting it right and everything. So uh, you have to, f uh, then you have to figure out where to place this uh, library to make it work on that particular platform and probably also pray that all this works without exposing your entire app to some sort of security issue. So next, you will load this into the Java class that you uh, wrote in the first step, and then run the class, and hopefully it works. Oof, so this was just to get a simple get bit call. So this was what you had to do to get a, a simple get bit call to work, right? So imagine writing something like an OpenGL interface or a GPU offloading, uh, or, or you know using CUDA in, in, in your Java program 
with jna so imagine imagine that how how complex this has to be this that that will be now let's see how we can do the same using the panama apis so we can do this uh, in two ways um uh, the first approach would be uh, by manually looking up and loading the native function uh, second approach would be using uh, the j extract tool so in the first case uh, you just write some java code using uh, c linker uh, which is a part of the which is part of the uh, uh, foreign linker api you look up the native method and invoke it it's as simple as that so you can also do more complex stuff like uh, working with native memory you know uh, uh, two way communication with the uh, native code etc you know uh, all all by all this way with this approach uh, with this approach you are uh, actually using the uh, li uh, foreign linker api and foreign memory api directly to do native calls and to manage native memory so this is not the most efficient way though if you use j extract the end that this entire code block that you had to write on the left hand uh, that that you see on the left hand side can be reduced to one line of code so basically you have to run uh, j extract against the header that you want to use the c header that you want to use and it will create java uh, api or java access points for that entire uh, 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 native library or that that header it will create access points uh, with java interfaces and everything methods and everything and then you just call the method so it's as simple as that uh with j extract you are getting a pure java api for the native program and you won't have to write any native code or touch any header files to uh, do anything uh, the only thing you have to do is find the file run j extract call the method that's it so is isn't that awesome so this is the kind of ffi experience that you get in languages like go and ros so with project panama finally in java we have a similar experience so you don't have to actually uh, do a lot of manual binding you don't have to worry too much about memory safety because the tool is taking care of generating uh, uh, the bindings and all those things you don't have to write any native code yourself and and finally you can be a java developer who only writes you know java code if that's your thing so for simple native calls you know where you're just calling one method or something then the first approach uh, m you know uh, might do the trick you can get away with that but for uh, any complex um, use cases the second uh, approach using j extract is much more superior much more efficient otherwise you'll end up with a lot of boilerplate code and there's also another reason for that i'll come to that so um i actually ran some benchmarks to compare performance of jni and panama api uh, you can also find uh, uh, i think there's a, a github uh, repository where uh, uh, there is benchmarks with uh, jni jnr uh, jna panama and a uh, few bunch of like one or two other libraries there's a, a similar benchmark there uh, you could also check that out uh, which uh, and, and the results are quite quite similar uh, so what i did was um, yes uh, where is it okay so um, you can uh, you can actually um, you can actually find the uh, repository i have uh, given the link uh, in this slide you can find the uh, github repository where i have uh, i have uploaded the um, code for this it's a it's a simple benchmarks uh, it uses the get pid example that we saw so i uh, use uh, both the jna version uh, panama uh, uh, using j extract version and panama using direct uh, c linker down calls uh, so i i ran uh, the benchmarks and this is the result so uh, seems like using panama apis with j extract is as performant as jna in, in and this was done on open jdk 17 uh, panama build so uh, jd uh, uh, the panama i mean uh, foreign linker and memory access api with j extract is as performant as jna and in some cases it was even slightly more performant and in some cases jna was like so you know on average it's as performant as jna and this is the incubator state so i am expecting this to become uh, much more uh, much more performant than jna once it has uh, you know reached stable state however using panama apis without j extract seems to be quite slow compared to jna that's probably due to the dynamic uh, loading of native methods and, and stuff like that because j extract uh, you know um, uh, uh, analyzes your uh, c header passes it and generates uh, uh, optimal uh, apis and everything whereas if you're writing your own uh, uh, code probably it's not as performant as the generated one uh, but i'm not an expert uh, in, in in the j extract uh, uh, 
uh, area or, or the you know native uh, memory access area so if anyone knows what is the actual reason for this huge difference because it's not a small difference it's a it's a considerable considerable difference first i thought it could could be a one time thing so i ran the benchmark like 10 15 times and it, with with different configurations different setups i tried few different variations of the code with you know like get uh, you know with having a static linker with uh, get uh, creating the linker each time uh, using uh, um, uh, using a sh like a, a stateful I mean, I mean like a singleton and everything but regardless of what i tried the result was almost the same all the time so i don't know what exactly causes this huge performance drop when using uh, the APIs directly without J extract. But regardless, in realistic use cases, I think the way to go would be to use J extract because I don't think in a realistic use case, say for example, in your Java program, if you're going to do any uh, CPU work or if you're going to access uh, OpenGL to uh, do some, uh, say, say 3D, render some 3D uh, uh, model, I don't think you're going to do that using direct APIs. I think you will be using J extract to get the uh, Java API for OpenGL and then you would be working with that. And I I, uh, I would expect that to be the default way of using uh, uh, the Panama APIs going forward. Like once it is stable, I, I would expect that to be the default way because that is much more efficient. And as you can see, it's also much more performant. So the only, only cases I could think of where you would actually use the APIs directly would be maybe, yeah, maybe if you're just doing a one-off call like 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 the get bit call or if you're just accessing once one method from some library in a one-off thing then maybe it would make sense to use that because then you don't have to worry about you know uh, uh, using j extract to uh, get all uh, you know uh, create all the uh, 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 java api because this is also not so because ffi is not platform independent it is platform dependent. So if you want your Java program to work across, say, uh, Unix and Windows, then you would have to uh, uh, you would have to compile against uh, both the uh, versions of the the header, and you would have to uh, provide uh, both uh, uh, you know uh, libraries, and then you would have to write code to uh, detect OS and work across, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So maybe for a one-off call uh, uh, using direct apis might be much more simpler to handle because you don't have to worry about all these uh, 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 you know uh, natives uh, like like all these binaries and stuff whereas uh, for a actual use case involving a large library then j extract would be the way to go so um, are we there yet uh, so in, in in terms of ffi comparing to a modern language like go or uh, rust um, I would say we are getting there. Uh, uh, the Panama APIs can already work with uh, languages that are C and drop. That means you can work with C, C++, Fortran, Rust, etc. I already tried uh, uh, creating, uh, I already created, uh, 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 tried out uh, calling uh, Rust uh, uh, functions from Java using FFI and works uh, fabulously. Um, so performance is on par with JNI. Uh, hopefully it will be improved further so j extract makes things really easy uh, in terms of using native libs the only um, uh, challenge i had when i started using this and when i started uh, uh, exploring this was you know uh, figuring out uh, 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 what exact j extract command to run because if your header file has dependencies then you have to provide those uh, uh, command line parameters and everything so figuring out that and getting the right uh, j extract command against the right header file was the most challenging thing. Uh, uh, then the next challenging thing was, of course, navigating navigating documentation because at the incubator stage, I think most of the documentation you will find are quite outdated. Um, I don't know why, because most documentation I found, uh, even on the official uh, Panama uh, repository, the official uh, Oracle pages, JDK pages, they were all quite outdated so you'd have to you know read uh, java docs here and there try to figure out what changed because uh, th this is an incubating api so there, there'll be a lot of changes in api a lot of uh, deprecations like a lot of uh, uh, breaking changes without warnings and stuff so you'd have to navigate that so documentation needs a huge improvement uh, even the official examples you will find most of them are quite outdated if you try them with the current jdk versions it will not work uh, at least I couldn't get any of them to work as it is. 
I had to make a lot of changes to even make some of them work. Uh, but it's an incubating feature, so this is all expected, I would say. And of course, uh, you can already access uh, 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 native or off heap, heap memory. You can call, make uh, uh, JNA calls, and uh, this is much more memory safe and less brittle than JNA. So finally, here are some links that I would recommend if you want to learn more about uh, Panama APIs. And with that, uh, I would say goodbye. So thank you, folks. Uh, I hope the talk was worth your time, and thank you for attending. Uh, you can reach out to me via Twitter, and do check out my website for more content. Thank you.